My name is Bruce Munro and I'm an artist. I work a lot with light. I'm always aware of materials and how they react to light. Over the years I've kept these journals and I've found that the ideas that I've recorded that resonate with me are where I've actually disappeared and they're not really about me, they're more about how will the landscape or the environment affects me. And the works that I try and convey to others are feelings that I know that other people share with me. It's just a language because I see art really for me as a, a language. I was traveling in Australia, in central Australia. I had this incredible experience of just feeling alive and connected with the landscape around me. And I wanted to create a piece of art. And I had my sketchbook with me and I decided to just write down a few ideas. When I was a child, we used to listen to the radio. When you twiddled the knobs, you could actually hear uh, static and Morse code sometimes between changing channels. And I really love that soundtrack. Whenever I hear that, it takes me back. And the other part of that was I wanted to create a piece of work that was slightly quirky and joyful, that would allow people to move through it and almost um, dance with joy because often a music is very evocative, it reminds you of, again of experiences. Gone Fishing was really inspired by early days of my brother and I going fishing together. But I realised that when people go fishing they're often going to take themselves away from the stress and strains of life. Gone fishing is really another way of saying I'm going somewhere to, to be at peace with myself. Ramadou's Table. As a child I was a big fan of C.S. Lewis and one of his books, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, basically it's an old gentleman who lives on an island called Ramandu and every morning he uh, lays this table. As the sun rises, these birds fly out of the sun of that world and br one of them brings a jewel from the gardens of the sun in its beak and it gives it to the star and this old gentleman and he rejuvenates by, by one day. So it's a lovely way of seeing an, an old figure become younger. Then I discovered a number of years ago that a gentleman called Don Featherston, he's the designer of the American plastic pink flamingo that populates people's lawns, which I love, it's high kitsch. Anyway, I got hold of the factory that made Don's flamingos and asked if they could make them in white. We've projected a very simple colour change of rich reds, oranges and yellows to sort of mimic a, a rising and a setting sun. And I kind of love the setting it's in in Longwood because it's on the lake with a waterfall behind. It's a little bit crazy and I hope people will get a bit of joy from that. So sea scales, I've just tried to create a very gentle meditative installation that captures the spirit of the water gardens at Longwood. Green Flash is a very old memory when we were travelling around Australia. We were trying to always photograph the elusive Green Flash. The Green Flash is when the sun dips behind the horizon, the last bit of the sun, and there is a myth that it flashes green. There is this notion that artists they don't need anybody but themselves and I would quite, you know, I work in the opposite way. I actually think the more people that you have working with you, the better because if you've got an idea to, for example, plant 18,000 stems of light, you're going to be here for a long time if you do it on your own. 
I actually created this for Longwood 10 years ago. So this is a 10 year celebration of my work here. You know, I got this incredible opportunity to come here and, and create. And actually, I have really to thank Longwood for uh, my opportunities that I've had over the last 10 years because it really started here. So from my point of view, it was um, a marriage made in heaven. If I can give people a lighter heart and then put a smile on their face, then what I've done, what we've done together, has been worth it.